dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing God's word and celebrating God's sacraments, we share in Christ's victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glory of splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice, to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our forebears, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. 
This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Ah, wonderful and beyond all knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. O oh, happy fault! O oh, necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us so great a Redeemer. How holy is this night, when wickedness is put to flight, and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred, and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and humankind is reconciled with God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice the offering of this candle in your honor, the work of the bees, your creatures. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning, who gives his light to all creation, and who lives and reigns in you forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how God saved God's people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you will have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. 
Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelites arm. Sorry. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the water forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted, the horse and its rider as he held into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge, the Stretched forth your 
God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm, your chosen people from all slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Salvation offered freely to all. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the righteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, for he has, that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that be that goes out of, from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. Known among the peoples, 
See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. O God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Gathering of God's People. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall, not, you shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives you victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on the day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable powers and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know 
the things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up your church, that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. A reading from the book of Romans. Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God so that you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came down and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been risen as he said he he can't come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where he will see, you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Ironically, at its outset, Holy Saturday is the emptiest day in the Christian year. But at about sunset or somewhat later, in many parishes, it turns into the Easter Vigil, which is probably the busiest and most complicated liturgy in the life of the Church. Holy Saturday is truly barren, confusing, hopeless, and grief-stricken. It's a day without the Eucharist, and the order for the liturgy for Holy Saturday in the Book of Common Prayer is exactly one page, including an opening prayer, citations for three scripture readings, and a psalm, a homily, an anthem from the burial office in place of the prayers of the people, followed by the Lord's Prayer and the Grace. There is not even a blessing. The Gospel assigned for the service is Matthew's account of Joseph of Arimathea arranging for the burial of Jesus and Pilate posting guards at the tomb. Holy Saturday is meant to point towards the initial experience of the profound grief felt by Jesus' mother Mary, his disciples, his women followers, and other members of the Jesus movement. That experience of grief probably included feelings of being stunned, of disbelieving reality, feeling overcome, and perhaps strangely even searching for the deceased. On that day, the disciples believed that all was lost. Their beloved teacher, their experience of community, their respective ministries, and their hopes for the future. Jesus was as yet dead and buried in the tomb. I believe all of us actually have glimpses of Holy Saturdays in our lives. Even in the midst of what is normally a lot of decorating and preparation for the Easter Vigil and Easter Day, it would be a desirable thing if we could pause for just a little while to quietly take in the implications of Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Perhaps we could keep the chocolate bunnies and the pretty eggs to wait for Sunday morning. But this year, the current situation in our nation and around the world, as we deal with and dwell in an unprecedented pan epidemic, has in some sense cast us all into a sort of vigil situation. In a strange way, our current situation of fear of infection, potential loss of jobs and income, mandated social isolation, closed schools, offices, and shops, canceled athletic events, and physically closed churches 
have this year given virtually all of us much to fear, much to regret, much to yearn for, much to lament, and much to mourn. We are in the depths of a Good Friday experience, the end of which is nowhere in sight. There is no denying that the great vigil of Easter, as it is called, is indeed great, both in terms of its length time-wise and in terms of the diverse liturgical elements which are contained in the service. Unlike Jesus, the great vigil of Easter has not been and never will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. The earliest form of the Easter vigil services survives in an ancient manuscript belonging to the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem. It includes a gospel reading, which extends from the account of the Lord's Supper all the way to the very end of Matthew's gospel. Now that's a lot of work for deacon. That manuscript also includes 12 Old Testament readings, which survey the salvation history of the people of Israel. By contrast, the 1979 Book of Common Prayer offers eight Old Testament readings, but like many parishes, we're allowed to admit some of those from our service as we did today. It would seem that our tolerance for extremely long readings and liturgies is not what it used to be. Over the centuries, the normative service for the Great Vigil of Easter has evolved to include four essential elements. First, the service of light, with the kindling of the new Easter fire, the lighting of the Paschal candle, and the chanting of the exultant, which was composed sometime between the 5th and 7th centuries. The liturgy of the word, about which I've already spoken. Third, Christian initiation, including the blessing of the water of baptism in the font, baptisms when there are children or adults to be baptized, confirmation if the bishop is present, first communion, the renewal of baptismal vows. After the renewal of vows, the congregation is sprinkled with baptismal water, which is known as asperges, and finally the Holy Eucharist, during which we usually have opportunity to sing some of our favorite Eastertide hymns. And indeed, there is no higher sacrament or celebration than that of the Eucharist. Even the timing of the vigil is changed ecumenically and in our Anglican tradition. In the 1950s, Pope Pius XII moved the vigil from Saturday morning to Saturday evening. He ruled it should be after sunset on Saturday or no later than sunrise on Sunday. Easter vigil has not been uniformly observed in the Anglican communion, though it has become far more common since the service was incorporated into many Anglican prayer book revisions during the past 70 years. Formerly, the Easter Vigil was only celebrated in parishes with a very high church or Anglo-Catholic tradition. Since it had been abandoned in the Reformation and only began to be recovered in our tradition when the Oxford and Tractarian movements emerged in the mid 19th century. Over time, many Episcopal churches began to observe the vigil service first at 11 p.m with the First Communion of Easter actually being received a little after midnight. More recently, cultural realities, life rhythms, and a shrinking pool of drivers able to drive at night have pushed many parishes towards an Easter vigil at 7 or 8 p.m. Over about 17 years, beginning in 1991, I made 15 teaching missions to the Diocese of the High Veld in the Anglican Church in South Africa, including three trips which coincided with Holy Week and Easter. I was able to participate in the vigil services in three different African townships. All of them had their vigil service starting just before sunrise on Easter morning, often about 5.45 a.m. Those three services were some of some of the most spiritually renewing experiences of my life and ministry. Inevitably, many hundreds of people were in church, with a marked predominance of women 
with many of them being members of the Mother's Union in their uniformly blue uniforms. As the preacher, I was expected to speak in manageable sound bites that would be translated into at least three languages by a team of translators. Hymns were sung and familiar prayers like the Lord's Prayer were said by each person in his or her first or native tongue, which sometimes surprisingly created a glorious cacophony of prayers and praise. After communion, all of the children, they're not allowed to receive Holy Communion in that church until confirmation, would come to the altar for a blessing from the highest ranking clergy person in the altar party. Bishop David Bietke had made me an honorary canon of the Diocese of the Highveld in appreciation for helping to develop HIV AIDS programs in the diocese. So that usually meant I was the one to bless the children. One Easter, I blessed 600 children and then some, one by one. I would add that on Palm Sunday, all of the members of the congregation who were able did a procession through this township distributing palms. Often those processions would take almost two hours. I know of a few parishes in this country that have in recent years, but not this year, had similar processions around their town or city. This year, however, we've been trying to figure out how to take our liturgies to our people, both by electronic means like Zoom and printed means like email and Facebook. I want to thank Jill Osis, our truly extraordinary parish administrator, Deacons Gail Bennett and Carolyn Bradley, our splendid and very collegial organist, Jim Balmer, some of the truly gifted members of the choir, and vergers and lay readers who have made themselves available at odd hours and on day, odd days so that we might do our best to bring this historic church into the virtual realities of communication of the 21st century. I suspect that some of the things we are learning will enhance and enable our effective ministries in the years and decades to come. I also want to thank the wardens and vestry who have given us all much very helpful encouragement and the congregation for their patient and generous receptivity when things aren't quite an A+. Some of you know that I'm an enthusiast for the Broadway theater. I want to read the lyrics of a song from Rogers and Hammerstein's Carousel, which has been running around in my head a lot in recent days. I think it has a prayer-like quality. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. And finally, I offer a closing prayer written by my favorite Anglican spiritual writer, David Runcorn. God of terror and joy, you arise to shake the earth. Open our graves and give us back our past, so that all that has been buried may be freed and forgiven, and our lives may return to you through the risen Christ. The Renewal of Baptismal Vows Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your com 
commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May God, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now we bless the baptismal water in the fountain. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to, right give, to give God thanks praise. and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. And if we were live in the church, I would have the aspergium, and I'd be going up and down the aisles, sprinkling you with holy baptismal water. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to God. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the good earth which God hath given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it. We pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the departed, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, we pray to you, risen Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, by your grace, in communion with the Blessed Mary, the God-giver, and all our saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Lord you, Jesus Lord. Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where in the Holy Trinity you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We want to welcome everyone who is joining us either electronically or through printed materials. We appreciate your staying in touch with us and your faith in this way. And we long for the days when we'll be back in church with the kind of services and music and environment that we so much appreciate and enjoy. I want to thank the staff and lay leaders who have done so much to help us create a Holy Week in a way that at least for me is totally novel. And I have special admiration for Jill Osis, who has just been a masterful director, producer, camera person, and a whole lot more. She's one of the truly unique human beings in the Episcopal Church, and we're very blessed that she is our parish administrator. I know that this is a challenging time in terms of work and income and finances for so very many of us. I do want to say that it's also a difficult time for churches. And if you are able to make a contribution, if you're able to keep up your pledge, if you're able to make a special offering or memorial offering, every bit of help would be a great blessing and you can do that electronically uh, without having to even come by the church and at this point i want to say let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the lord splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right to learn that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. 
from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear God's Son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, among us Jesus, loved, Jesus us. loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaim good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete it upon the cross, the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friend. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gather at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring, bring us with the ever blessed Virgin, Virgin Mary and, and all your saints from, from every tribe and language and people, and, people and, nation, and nation to feast, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art who in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day, day our daily bread, and, bread. and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, we forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the glory forever. forever and ever. Amen. Correction. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover, a sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As you all know, the bishop has instructed us only to share in spiritual communion, and we do that by recollecting those many times when we've been at actual communion with both the bread and the wine, or one or the other. And we recall those times of communion as we embrace this time of spiritual communion, confident that God's body and blood will continue to feed us heal us, and inspire us. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. And, and continue, continue forever, forever in the risen the life risen of life Christ, Christ our, Savior. our Savior. Amen. May God Almighty, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of God's Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God Amen. brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your inherit, eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.